Hey everyone, Alex here with Off The Cuff Podcast. I am back again to bring you guys a special new episode. And this time, uh, we have a pretty big episode for you, a pretty somber episode, but we are definitely going to be talking about a lot of different things. First thing I want to talk about is, of course, the passing of the actor... Uh, Chadwick Boseman, um, you know, it's very sad. Uh, I, w- I wasn't a huge fan of Black Panther as a film. I do understand the cultural uh, significance of that film, and I think that it is a very uh, great way to kind of introduce the black community to the superhero marvel world um like you know i feel like it doesn't actually even get talked about enough that movie is actually extremely important even though you know i may i may not have liked the logistics of the movie itself but that doesn't take away from chadwick's performance or anybody uh you know that likes that movie yeah I really, uh, you know, I, I never really uh, want to talk shit about that movie at all. And I don't want anyone else to really talk bad about it. I think the movie's great. Um, you know, I think it's a great way for uh, people to get involved into the Marvel community. But it is a sad day regardless. Uh, we did lose an, a great actor and we did lose a great person to this planet. Uh, it was actually released that he had been struggling with uh, cancer, colon cancer, actually. And, you know, that one kind of hit home for me. My uh, stepfather actually passed away from colon cancer as well. And I can tell you, you know, he, you know Chadwick, he, he, he went through and, and he made movies. He, he made whole movies while keeping this a secret and let me tell you my 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 stepfather went through stage four colon cancer and he battled it for for about a year about a year or so Uh, and and it and it was and it was rough it was rough for everyone involved it was rough for for us you know the family and i couldn't even imagine what he was going through he it was probably extremely tough and uh to to see someone else someone a little bit more significant than him uh go through this uh, it's you know it's a little bit eye opening and i hope it kind of open I, I i hope it actually opens a lot of people's eyes uh because it's um you know it's definitely tough it's definitely tough for the people that are in um that person's life on top of just them suffering you know and the fact that he worked through all of this to entertain is astronomically important. And that type of charisma and that type of um, personality is, is, not, is not known well among the community. I think, I, I think there's a lot of people that, you know, struggle with that kind of thing and, and they... You know, it's hard. It's it's extremely hard. I just, I just want to. I basically what I'm trying to say is that he he struggled a lot, and you can tell. Um. You can really tell that he he struggled, and it's really commendable that he was able to struggle through all of that and still put out amazing, amazing performances in his films to entertain the masses. You know, millions of people watch his movies millions upon millions and he really entertained a whole generation of people you know that one meme where it's that little kid and he's dancing and and you know people pass it around but that little kid if you guys know that little kid is in a video where he's dancing because he's about to go see black panther because he's excited to go see black panther because that's how important that movie is but 
with all of that said, uh, I do want to just send my condolences to Chadwick Boseman and the entire family as well. Uh, this, this whole entire situation is just heartbreaking, and uh, it's, it, it's, it really sucks for for not only his family but for everyone that was a fan. Uh, you know, of course, I, I I wasn't you know specifically following Chadwick Boseman's uh, career closely, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he wasn't a bad actor, that he was a bad actor. He's actually was a great actor and uh, we definitely lost a, uh, an amazing talent. So let's switch gears a little bit here. Um, of course, I, I don't want to be, I probably won't be as bubbly as normal. Um, maybe I do have, I do have some alcohol. Maybe, maybe we can uh, take a few drinks together. And uh, make this a fun episode after that somber opening. But, of course, I did want to mention that because that's a huge, huge uh, thing in the movie world right now. But let's switch gears here. So, if you, as, many peop- as many of you know, um, I actually put out a video recently where I reacted to the, ba- the Batman trailer that was just dropped with robert pattinson Uh, i think it was a great trailer it looks the film actually looks great it looks like they are getting back to the human human roots of batman now one thing i do want to address with that is a lot of people have been have been talking about how robert pattinson you know he's not wearing the cowl and he still has the eyeliner on and a lot of people are calling him emo batman well, let's let's take a step back for a second. Most Batmans are wearing that eyeliner. Uh, if you guys have actually been following the character at all, uh, most of the actors do wear that eyeliner. Of course, when they re- remove the cowl, he's not wearing the eyeliner in, in every single other movie. This is the first movie where he will be wearing it. Um, but I just wanted to address that, you know, he, it is not the first Batman to wear eyeliner um but (laughs) that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not emo batman either uh he definitely does fit the part he looks like he's straight out of a my chemical romance music video in that trailer let's be real um i do think the trailer looks great if you guys haven't already go check out my uh review of the trailer which is on my off the cuff reviews youtube channel I think the trailer I think the trailer looks great. I think Robert Patton looks Robert Pattinson looks great as the Batman. He is actually coming together as an amazing actor. Of course people shit on him before the tri- the Twilight movies. The Twilight movies are trash. Let's be real. He he it's it's not even really his fault. He was young, he was impressionable. Those movies are garbage. Um you know, yeah, you can like those movies, but the performances in those movies are literally bad. Those the performances in those movies are some of the worst performances that I have ever seen. And that is not to even take away from Robert Pattinson. I think Robert Pattinson is great. I think Kristen Stewart is great. But those movies are actual garbage. <laughs> if you guys, you know, I think you you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Those movies are absolutely bad but with that said robert pattinson has coming has been coming together in his own right these last few years the lighthouse was amazing good time was one of is one of my favorite movies the safety brothers of course craft amazing films but good time is great the lighthouse is great he's been in a lot of great indie films that you may not have known about so please Go check out his filmography and check out his other films because he is amazing. Way better than you probably think. Now, with that said, um, I think the trailer, of course, like I said, looks great. Um, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Matt Reeves in general, but I think that he might be crafting something uh, really special. And of course, with that said, um, and you know, there's a couple of people that don't even look like themselves, you know, Colin Farrell's in that film. Did you guys even know Colin Farrell is in the Batman? Paul Dano is in the Batman. Paul Dano looks 
incredible in the Batman. I, I first of all, I love Pat, Pat Paul Dano, and he looks incredible. Um, but one problem that I have, and it's not even necessarily with that specific movie, it's the fact that. There's so many Batman movies being released or or DC movies being released and they kind of are all coming out. They just dropped like four trailers back to back to back. There's so many bat there's so much Batman content coming out that I'm just tired of it, dude. I am tired of it and I'm tired of it every single year getting a new Batman story, getting a new Batman, you know, just getting a whole new Batman universe. I'm I'm so sick and tired of it. I'm honestly tired of it. I don't know why there's so many Batman movies coming out. They're just trying to ride on the coattails of the Dark Knight. Let's be real. They really are. I think that I think that um I'm not trying to say that like the Batman tri- the whole Batman universe should have died with the dark knight no they definitely have their right to make a new movie but it's like every couple of years there's a new batman movie coming out as a new guy playing batman dude there's literally they're literally making a movie where two different people play batman in the same movie dude i'm done with it i'm literally done i'm done with how everyone's like oh my god there's a new batman there's a new batman there's a new batman i'm done with it i'm done it's too much. It's really too much. It really is. Um, but of course, with that said, this Batman movie with Robert Pattinson does look pretty cool. And I am pretty excited for it. So, in other news, um, in the movie industry, it seems like the mu- the new mutants is not getting good reviews i have not seen it yet Uh, i do want to watch it i am going to make a a video on my off the cuff reviews channel so you guys can definitely check it out but um i could tell that it it's not getting good reviews but that movie the production on that movie has wow man like i don't know if you guys have been following the production on that movie but it kind of sucks that movie has been passed around and passed around and passed around and then delayed and delayed and delayed. And that was all before COVID and then COVID happened. And then, Oh my God, push that off, man. Um, I, I am excited to at least take a look at it uh, and I will have a review coming out shortly about it. So with all of that said, we are going to switch gears here. Um, we're, we are going to switch gears into the I Watched segment of this podcast. Let me bring it up. Okay, cool. So, let's talk about a few movies. I just watched... Spree, which I actually thought was pretty good. I don't know if I talked about that in my last podcast. I did think Spree was pretty good, though. I think that it was cool how they directed it and they had it all filmed with cameras that are actually in the in the car. Now, that may not be a groundbreaking thing, but a lot of films, even when they film things um, from the perspective that they filmed in that movie, you can tell that they used an actual professional camera and that they edited it, edited it, edited it to look like a camera, like a GoPro. But these were actually filmed like on GoPros and all these, um, you know, these, these cameras. And Joe Keery does a great job in that movie. I think that he's coming into his own. Um, I do love him in Stranger Things, of course. But I think that he needs to step away from Stranger Things and kind of get into his own roles and his own identity and i think that he is doing a great job at that spree is a great step into the film universe and i loved it the next one that i really enjoyed that i watched was impedagore which is on shutter right now uh impedagore is actually pretty great 
Um, I think that the scares were great in this one. Like some of the best scares that I've seen, the, the, the script does leave a little bit too um, desire, but I do really enjoy it. Uh, I, you know, I've actually watched a, a lot of movies recently. So well, let's move on to the next one that I want to talk about, which is Baby Teeth. Okay, Baby Teeth was great. It was phenomenal. I loved Baby Teeth. I loved Eliza. I love Eliza Scanlon. I cannot wait for her in that one movie that's coming out, The Devil All the Time. Um, she is an amazing actress, and Baby Teeth is no different. She puts on a phenomenal performance. Baby Teeth, uh, when I went into it, I didn't really know what it was even about. But like when you first get into it and you're first watching it in the first act, you're kind of thinking it's going to be a little bit of a goofy comedy with maybe some real human authentic elements because uh, it kind of does delve into cancer and and sickness and, and things like that. But then it gets into the third act and you realize how sad this movie really is. And I'm putting that out there. I don't want that. I don't want this to be a spoiler, but I do want to tell you guys this movie is fucking sad, dude. I didn't know how sad this movie actually was until I watched it. And at the end, I'm literally sobbing, dude. I'm sobbing. Oh, my God. I, I mean, you can kind of tell where it's going, but you go watch that movie. I loved it. Eliza Scanlon's great. Uh, let's move on to something a little bit more lighthearted, which I thought was actually, um, pretty good, which, uh, is one BR Netflix just dropped this film. Netflix just dropped one BR. Let's talk about it for a second because it doesn't look like it's going to be that good. It looks like a typical, it looks like a typical movie that you would see on Netflix or even like MTV films would produce. It doesn't look like it's it, it doesn't look like it's going to be that good at all until you put it on and you realize that the story doesn't go the way that you think it's gonna go and it goes a completely different route and it's actually a pretty interesting take on this genre the the some of the things in it um you can tell that they probably have a lower budget um, but I think the directing is good. I think the cinematography is good. I think that the story, the script, the screenplay is good. The, the whole thing is good. They really did a good job on this one. And I really commend them for it. Okay. Let's get into another movie that I watched recently. And that movie is... The Master. Paul Thomas Anderson's The Master. Let's get into it. Okay. Sorry about that. I actually just cut out because I had to use the restroom. But The Master by Paul Thomas Anderson. What a film. Paul Thomas Anderson is really coming in to be one of my favorite directors of all time. The Master just shows how incredible films really are. It proves that you can make incredible, incredible, incredible films. I really enjoyed The Master. Now, The Master stars Joaquin Phoenix, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Amy Adams. The list goes on. There are so many actors and actresses in this film that are huge names. And they put on some of the best performances that you will ever see in your entire life. Joaquin Phoenix's performance in The Master is something that you should literally be in awe of. It's so real and authentic and, and it draws you in and you feel, you feel like you are in Joaquin Phoenix's head in this movie. Now, some people have talked about this film maybe being about Scientology. And I tend to agree. 
here's why. So if you know anything about Scientology or maybe looked up anything about Scientology, you would know that Scientology does a little bit of a vetting process. And when you want to join Scientology, you can you have to answer like a questionnaire. You have to answer a questionnaire about like your pers- your personality and um the scene where Joaquin Phoenix while where Joaquin Phoenix is answering the questions from Philip Seymour Hoffman is one of the best scenes of acting that I've ever witnessed in my entire 27 years of being on this planet and I mean that I there were there and you know the master is incredible there I gave it a four and a half out of five stars on letterboxd and I don't regret that I don't regret that at all I actually would have given it a five out of five I think that movie is that good the only reason i get i took a half star off is because and it's not even a huge deal but in my eyes since the uh, the rest of the film is that good um this small thing really kind of detracts from the actual movie in my opinion but so some of the scenes are drawn out a little bit too long and some of the scenes are don't even really need to be in the film and i think that that is more or less to draw i i kind of felt like they were trying to make the film longer by putting these extra scenes in there that probably that probably could have been cut out and maybe put in as like a director's cut edition but they kept them in anyway and it's just kind of like like there were just scenes that were kind of draw draw like they 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 were just so long and like like but here's the thing Here's the thing. Whenever I see a, a film and there's a scene that's too long, in my opinion, I might try to skip it. But right when I'm about to skip a scene in The Master, it draws me back in. Right back in. Joaquin Phoenix says something that's incredible. Or Philip Seymour Hoffman delivers a performance that is just fucking phenomenal. And you just get sucked back into the film that you have to watch the whole thing from start to finish, man. And that movie is just bonkers it's so good it's so good i i I want everyone to go watch that film yeah it might be about scientology but it 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 really it really is it really is it really is something to behold that is a movie that everybody should see in their lifetime and um i really think uh everyone should go watch it it's on netflix right now Paul Thomas Anderson made There Will Be Blood. He made The Master. He made a lot of the movies that you like. Phantom Thread. A lot of these movies he made. And I think that you guys would all love them. So I think you should definitely go check them out. Another movie that I watched uh, that I don't know if I talked about yet was Urban Legend. Urban Legend, I think, was a great horror film. I gave it a four out of five stars. But the only now, listen, my star ratings on Letterbox uh, are my own objective feelings about the film, regardless of what you guys think or regardless of what anyone else thinks. Um, I don't think that um, they, you don't even have to. I don't even have to really explain this, but I just want to let you know that yeah, I gave Urban Legend a four out of five. Some people might not agree with that that rating but i think that it's good in the sense that it's it was fresh and exciting and it kind of got it kind of got put to the side because it came out um it came out pretty much the same year as some other great horror films from the 90s and um so when you know, uh, these other films got put out. This one kind of got put to the side. I actually, this was the first time I ever watched it. Uh, and I, I actually really enjoyed it. I was really immersed in, um, I was really immersed in this film. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually looking at my 
letterboxed right now and I noticed that there are a few films that I forgot to actually add. Wow. Okay. I just want I just wanted to say that because I'm looking at my letterbox list right now. There's a few films that I missed. But okay. So switching gears here, let's go into another film that I think is pretty good. And it actually stars another person from Stranger Things. You may know what I'm about to talk about. And that is Yes, God, Yes. This film uh, stars Natalie Dyer. Natalia Dyer. Sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> um, but it is about a young Catholic girl who um, actually gets tempted into uh, masturbating for the first time um, due to an AOL chat. And it kind of shows how a lot of uh, young, innocent, sheltered, which I think is the best word here, uh, people who, who grew up in that time, um, they, they, it shows how they kind of get sucked into this world that they may not have known. They may not have known about because they're sheltered. And... Natalie Adair does a great job in this film. Um, I think she's coming into her own. I actually really adore Natalie Adair. I think more people should talk about her. But I think she's great, and I think this film's great. It's pretty funny, but I think that the social aspects of the film, the societal social aspects of the film, are what's more important here than the actual comedy. Uh, but I did really enjoy it. And it's actually based on a f short film, I think, of the same name. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, and you know what? That is probably going to wrap up my I Watched segment. Um, I'm, a, I'm about to watch a film. Actually. Oh, wait. Hold on. I just watched a film last night. What did I watch? Hmm. Wow. Oh, no, I just watched La Llorona. Okay, so I just watched La Llorona, which is a Shudder original. Um, and no, it's not The Curse of La Llorona. That movie is actual garbage. Uh, this is La Llorona, the actual, uh, the actual film. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. I did think, I did wish there was a little bit more action involved. Like, well, not like action, not like action, like, like an action movie, but I think that I I kind of wish that there was more. Um, I just kind of wish it was like a little bit more intense. I did enjoy it, but I think that um, it was kind of just like a mediocre horror film. I think that it's it kind of lacked a lot of spark. It wasn't nearly as bad as The Curse of La Llorona. But it is definitely not as good as I wished it would be. Although, I do enjoy it. It is about an aging, paranoid uh, dictator who is protected by a witchcrafting wife. He faces death and the uprise of his people in Guatemala. And it talks about how he was he served in the military and he's, and he's plagued by these visions. And it, I think... I think that... Even though they did a more realistic take on the La Llorona lore, I think that um, they kind of did a disservice because they, they did something where it's kind of like a trope. The whole film is kind of like a trope where they, they I don't know, they, I think that they, they, they put too much too much emphasis on the fact that you know, he's plagued by these visions and he's a military person and he's, he's political and I don't know. I think that they could have done a better job with the actual story. Um, and I think La Llorona deserves a better telling of it. And I think that the only reason that it's rated so high right now by a lot of critics and a lot of people is because the curse of La Llorona was so bad. And they had such a bad take on that folklore. The Curse of La Llorona is so bad. 
Can we actually talk about that for a second? They literally took a Mexican or whatever, like they, they took a Latino folklore tale and turned it into a standard California Hollywood Blumhouse film in the Conjuring universe. And it was garbage. They could have done so much better with that. Switching gears here. Um, there are a few. Mo there are a few movies that I do want to see. One of them is the New Mutants, like I said. Uh, another one that I will be coming out with a review for, whenever I'm able to watch it, is Tenet. Um, here's the thing. Here's the thing. A lot of people are going to the theater, and the theaters aren't even open where I am now. There are drive-in theaters, I think, that are open, but. I might. I, I don't know if I want to really even go to the driving theater. I kind of want to wait for it to be streaming. I, I think I made a podcast before where I want to see this in the theater, but I don't want to drive to go see it. I don't want to go drive to see Tenet. I really don't. I, I don't want to go drive to see any movie in the theater, really. I think that... You know, J oh, my God, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, I think judging by... You know, listen, listen. <laughs> Here's the thing. I watched a YouTube video recently where it showed a person who broke into an abandoned building and an, an, abandoned, an abandoned movie theater. And they were just, you know, exploring. And, and I love those kind of videos. I actually think I want to start making those kind of videos uh, for my Prying Eyes channel, which I will tell you guys more about in another podcast episode but they went to this abandoned theater who that was abandoned since the early 2000s and they ended up finding old candy and old popcorn that was just buried under the seats and that shows how they didn't clean the theaters that well which means that it is just a cesspool of disease. So I don't want to go to a theater where there's going to be a bunch of people coughing and they're not going to be cleaning, regardless of wearing a fucking mask. I think it's a stupid idea to go there right now. I think you could definitely get COVID or any kind of disease. Um, and until they, be, they, until they come up with a little bit better of a cleaning solution, I'm not going to be going to the theaters at all. And until this dies down, I'm definitely not going to be going to the theaters at all. That doesn't mean you shouldn't go to the theaters. I'm not I'm not judging you if you do. You can definitely go to the theaters, but I'm just not going yet. So that's that. Another film I do want to watch is Bill and Ted Face the Music. Because I do love the original series. Um, and another film I want to see, which isn't out yet, but it should be dropping, I believe, this year. Um, unless it gets pushed back due to Corona. And that is... Dune. I really want to see Dune. Dune is one of my most anticipated films of the year. And that wraps up my segment for movies that I want to see. And I know this I know I said this might be a big episode, but I think I just kind of wrapped it up. I don't know. I I don't really have much really else to talk about. I wish I watched more movies in the time frame of which I recorded my last podcast until now. Because the other movies that I haven't mentioned, I am going to be making a video about on my YouTube channel anyway. So it doesn't really make sense for me to talk about them and, and talk about my feelings about them if I'm already going to be making a movie about it. Um, but I do want to just give a special shout out to my friend Ashley... I guess we're more than friends. I'm not really sure. Um, <laughs> um, I actually just got off FaceTime with her before I started recording this. She actually bought a Shutter, and she actually lets me use her Shutter account, which is great because um, there are a lot of original things on Shutter that are are great. Um, I really enjoy. Uh, using Shutter actually, and I actually think it's a a great option if you love horror movies. Um, and that is more or less just a shout out to Ashley.
because she's she's great. She's been watching movies with me. And she's been appreciating these movies with me. We're actually about to watch two movies um, when I get off this podcast episode. We are going to be watching the 2013 remake of of The Evil Dead, which is actually one of my favorites in the horror genre. I love that remake. And you know, the last time I watched this film, I was actually in college. I was. Um, it was a rainy day. I ended up going on my like we didn't have class. But here's the story. We ended up going to, um, we I ended up having to go to the school anyway because we had this thing called um, these. We had these lab hours where, like, we had to hurt, hit a certain amount of hours per week, where we were doing labs. And even though I was caught up on all of my labs and I was caught up on all of my projects, I went to the school anyway to get these hours. And when I went to the school, there was another kid there as well. And he loves horror movies just as much as me. And we ended up actually streaming the Evil Dead remake. As well as, uh, uh, what was that? Oh, Silent Dead. We ended up, oh no, Silent Dead. (laughs) Wow. Oh my God, I'm the worst. We ended up up streaming Silent Hill uh, because we both love that film. So... Um, we ended up streaming Silent Hill and the Evil Dead remake, and it was a rainy day, and we were in New York City, and I just wanted to tell you guys that story, because that was the last time I actually watched this film, and it's so fitting that me and Ashley are about to watch this on a rainy day in August. We're about to watch Evil Dead. I think it's just so fitting, because that is the perfect way to watch this film. This is the perfect way to watch any horror film, really. But I love Evil Dead. I will actually be talking about that on my next podcast, actually. So if you guys love the Evil Dead franchise at all, come come listen to my next episode where I kind of go in depth about it. But yeah, we're going to be watching the Evil Dead remake. And we're also going to be watching <laughs> You Cannot Kill David Arquette because we both love David Arquette. And... Of course he made a documentary about himself. So let's uh, let's get into those. If you guys if you guys like this podcast episode, uh, please join me on my YouTube channel because I'm going to be dropping new 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 videos every week as well as new Not just new reviews, but we're going to be doing a Patreon where I'm actually going to be doing a full episode of this podcast um, monthly on the Patreon where that is going to be a perk that you get when you join the Patreon. Uh, It is not launched yet, so I do not have the link, but when I launch it, you will get the link. You will get the link um, and you will get access. If you sign up, you will get access to that as well as extra reviews, extra videos, you guys, are get, you guys are going to be getting mu- music reviews as well. I just wanted to put that out there because I didn't actually talk about this on my channel, on my YouTube channel yet. But I wanted to give my podcast listeners an actual update and a, and a sneak peek into the Patreon because you guys are definitely going to be uh, enjoying, you know, the content that I'm going to be coming out with because we're going to be doing podcast episodes where we analyze films in real time and things like that. So you definitely are going to want to tune in, join the Patreon, be an exclusive member to my content. And uh, yeah, but I will see you guys on the flip side. I've been Alex. This is the off the cuff podcast. Tune in to my prying eyes podcast. If you enjoyed this, I'm going to be talking about mysteries and conspiracies and other political aspects uh very shortly so definitely join that as well like i said i'm alex this is the off the cuff podcast i will see you next time thanks for listening peace out